I've decided to try switching it up and doing ThreatWire Seated. I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. Spam calling and pop-up scams are actually illegal in the US, but it feels like they rarely get in trouble. Not this time, though. The FTC charged two companies, Restoro Cypress Media and Reimage Cypress Media, with scamming consumers with fake services. The charges were originally alleged in March 2024, however, finally settled and executed just this last week. The companies used fake Windows-looking pop-ups to alert targets that their computer was infected with viruses and that they needed their computer scanned. The faked scans provided fake results and were enticing enough to get the recipient to pay for services. Once past the purchase point, targets were enticed to purchase more software as a part of a highly recommended phone call for activating the software. The tactics were deemed to be misleading, as expected. The FTC fined the companies $26 million, and they were prohibited from, quote, making a false or misleading statement to induce any person to pay for goods or services or to induce a charitable contribution. The $26 million collected from the fines are being sent to affected people via 736,375 PayPal payments executed by the FTC on March 13th and 14th. Those who are eligible will or have received an email and must opt in to receive their payout. So at least this time the pop-ups finally got blocked. Apple released an urgent update to virtually all maintained devices after a major bug was found in core software. The CVE, CVE 2025-24201, affects the WebKit browser engine utilized by all browsers developed for Apple products. In traditional Apple fashion, not many details about the vulnerability were given. An out-of-bounds write issue was addressed with improved checks to prevent unauthorized actions. This issue is fixed in Vision OS 2.3.2, iOS 18.3.2, and iPad OS 18.3.2, Mac OS Sequoia 15.3.2, Safari 18.3.1. Maliciously crafted web content may be able to break out of the web content sandbox. This is a supplementary fix for an attack that was blocked in iOS 17.2. Apple was aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals on versions of iOS before iOS 17.2. The updates were made public March 11th, so go update now if you haven't. In an effort to fortify their cybersecurity practices, Canada has begun rolling out plans for a new countrywide cybersecurity certification. On March 12, 2025, the Canadian government announced Phase 1 of the Canadian Program for Cybersecurity Certification, or CPCSC for short. The CPCSC will consist of three levels. This first level is an annual cybersecurity self-assessment. The second level will be an external cybersecurity assessment by an accredited body, and the third level will be a cybersecurity assessment conducted by Canadian National Defence. The new certification is being created for companies that handle sensitive, unclassified government information in defence contracting. The first phase of the certification is being rolled out this month. The implementation of the CPCSC will be phased in gradually, allowing companies to adapt their operations to meet new requirements. The first phase will involve releasing a new Canadian industrial cybersecurity standard, opening the accreditation process, and introducing a self-assessment tool for level one certification. This will help businesses understand the program before a wider rollout later in 2025. Phase 1, which said earlier rolls out this month, makes the Level 1 self-assessment tool public as well as opens up applications for organizations who want to become Level 2 certifying bodies. Phase 2, expected in fall of 2025, will be the point when Level 1 will start to become required for some contracts and Level 2 will be tested in some existing contracts. Two more phases for rolling out the rest of the requirements will be executed over two years. 
In the last episode of ThreatWire, I reported on the proposed new law in France that required companies to decrypt information of users at the request of the French government. Failure to comply would result in hefty fines and operational limitations in the country. The law was met with backlash and criticism from major groups like Tuta Mail and the Global Encryption Coalition. In good news, the law has been rejected. The official hearing for the law and subsequent rejection happened on March 6th. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't something on the rise here. Over the past few months, it came out that Sweden was planning on proposing a bill this month to request decrypted messages and history of messages of suspected individuals. This would include message history from Signal, which ironically is encouraged and used by the Swedish army. The CEO of Signal went on record and replied, if this proposal becomes reality, we will leave Sweden. Asking us to store data would undermine our entire architecture and we would never do that. We would rather leave the Swedish market completely. Between this and the push for an iCloud backdoor in Apple by the UK, it's turning out to be a very interesting time for encryption in the world. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of March 16th, 2025. If you enjoyed this show, you can head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. Last week, we finally finished our Patreon book club where we read Hacking the Art of Exploitation, second edition. I'm curious, is there a technical book you have been wanting to read? Let me know in the comments. If you want to find me online, I'm at Ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft. And I did recently go viral about a cybersecurity meme on my Instagram. So please go check it out if you haven't seen it. And as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.